And finally, I'll apply a few coats of Micro Jig, maker of the gripper. Work safer, work smarter. Hey everybody, I got something special for you today. I'm with Chris, you probably know as the Idaho painter, and a member of his crew, John. And they're going to help us out with spray lacquer. I get a lot of comments from people who tell me I need to start using an HVLP system instead of going through can after can of spray lacquer. I guess the first question is, what kind of lacquer should you use to lacquer furniture or other small projects? Any lacquer is gonna work as long as it specs out that you can spray it. So right. even past then, you, you might be able to get away with some small projects with the, the stuff that gets brushed. It's just gonna be a little more difficult. Right, and because I, I have some of that uh, brushing lacquer, and it says right on the can, do not use in a sprayer. This is a type of lacquer that we typically use on all of our cabinets and finishes. This is a Sherwood High Build catalyzed lacquer. So it being catalyzed means it does have a shelf life to it. They write down on the date when you've got to use it and when it's not going to be any good anymore. But it's going to give a harder finish and we use a high build lacquer that's going to give a really uh, thick finish to it. That looks a lot, I think it just looks a lot thicker than inexpensive lacquers that come out of a spray can. There's a couple options. Some people will just have the gun and be using a um, another uh, air compressor on the side that's actually going to be driving the unit. We're going to be using the, 10, the 105 unit that's a four-stage turbine unit with along with this Titan Maxim Elite gun right here. This is the Titan cap spray 105 and this is a four-stage turbine and it's kind of acting the same as if in your wood shop you got an air compressor say a 20 gallon air compressor or a two gallon or three gallon air compressor it's gonna be sending out the air through this hose right here, and that's the air that's gonna be going right to our spray so gun. So it's a little bit different than a regular air compressor. I mean, you, is this strictly only for the sprayer? This is strictly only for the sprayer. It's really lightweight, too. Yeah. I, I like that a lot. It's, it's um, lighter than my compressor. Extremely light. It's a lot easier to move around and haul around than a 20 gallon air compressor. Uh, a couple different controls for you. Uh, back here, you're gonna control your air pressure. You, uh, you'll turn that up. That's going to adjust the amount of air that's coming to the tip of your gun and the pressure it's coming to. You're gonna be able to control your, your material flow, which is going to, to affect how far you can pull back the trigger. The, the turbine's gonna pressurize the pot to send the fluid up here to the projector set, and then all that material is going to come out of that little needle right there. You guys may remember this old shop cabinet I made a few years ago. I never put any kind of finish on it, so we're gonna use this for a demo. Uh, do we have to mix up lacquer thinner with lacquer, or can we use straight lacquer? Uh, it really depends on your setup. With this setup, what we're gonna do is, is take the, the lacquer and we're gonna cut it with about 25% lacquer thinner to get it thin enough to come through the gun and, and atomize correctly, so it leaves us with a really nice finish over the top. So is there, there's no real magic number, it's just kind of by feel? You know, because every product's gonna be a little bit different, and so you, you kinda gotta play it out a little bit. A, a lot of products are gonna have what's called a, a PDS, or a mm -hmm. product data sheet, and, and a lot of times it'll spec out how much it should be thin for what applications and that's usually a good place to start. Our pot here is a, a quart and so to get to that 25% uh, to, to eyeball it a little bit here we'll fill this pint can up halfway mm -hmm. with lacquer thinner add that into our pot and then we'll top it off the rest of the way with the product that we're going to be using and that'll get us to that 25% ballpark to start with and we'll see how that flows. And so you always want to make sure you, you stir up your product really well. The, the flattening agent will tend to sink towards the bottom if it's been sitting more than uh, an hour or two. And so always check it, always make sure it's well mixed. That flattening agent, what you actually see what John's actually talking about is when you're stirring it, if you pull up your stir stick, you'll see this white milky or even um, really white uh, substance that's stuck on the bottom of your stir stick. And that's actually what is creating the sheen of your lacquer. And if your lacquer is like a dull rubbed effect or some type of medium sheen and not a high gloss and you don't stir that up, it's going to come out high gloss or you're going to be sucking your lacquer off the bottom of your can. And so it's, your sheen's not going to come out right is basically what it comes down to if you don't stir it up properly. Mm. 
that knob you're adjusting there is just the, the, the yeah, trigger, right? Yeah, this is the product here, so this is going to affect how much is going to come out. And what I'm looking for is when the light's shining off of it, you'll see it kind of start to ripple away, and that's giving you a pretty good idea of how much is going on. And with a clear lacquer, uh, thinner is always better because you can always do more coats up to a certain point. Now I'm going to adjust how big my fan is so I have a little bit more control. Now I'll have to readjust how much product's coming out. And we're good to go. Do you have any tips for spraying it? You know, what I like to do is I'll start on the bottom and then I'll do any of the touch critical surfaces very last. That way there's no flashing or feathering coming around on uh. those. So we'll work our way around all these bottom pieces. And then the very last thing we're gonna do is the top. And you wanna overlap with a nice 50-50 uh, overlap. So 50% overlapping at a time. And then like I said, you wanna move pretty quick with a, a lacquer and, and make sure that you're getting it on just nice and even because you can always come back and add more coat. So basically you got the whole thing lacquered in like two minutes, <laughs> less than two minutes. You would probably want to build this up with more coats of lacquer and then usually what I like to do is just sand it lightly before the final coat. Would it be possible just to, if I, if I only use it for lacquer, to just leave the lacquer in it and just clean it out of this part or should you always clean it out? You know, I would always clean it out because you don't want the, the lacquer drying and messing up your projector set or, or gumming your gun up and, and really it just becomes more work for you the next time you go to use it. Uh, especially with a clear lacquer, it's going to be super fast. All we're going to do is we're going to empty out the, the mixed lacquer that we've got into a little cup here and we can put that in another can and, and save that for the next time that you need it. Just mark what you've uh, diluted it down to with the thinner. And then we're gonna put a little bit of lacquer thinner into this pot, seal it back up, and then we'll just shake that up after it's tightened up. And we've got just a bucket with us to put our, our dirty lacquer in. A little bit more in. What I'll do is I'll, I'll turn the air all the way off and that'll turn the air going to the tip off but our pot's still pressurized. And that'll send just straight lacquer through and now we're not blowing a big cloud of lacquer everywhere and smelling up the shop or the area. And then we can stop it right there. And then usually we'll just leave the lacquer thinner inside. That way it all stays uh, nice and thinned out and clean and it'll be ready to go the next time you need it. Just empty the thinner out and, and add whatever product in that you're gonna be using. That's all there is to it. Huh? That's all there is to it. Wow. Piece of cake. Well, my shop cabinet looks better than I ever expected it would. And I wanna thank John and Chris, the Idaho painter for helping me out with this. Be sure to check out Chris's channel, the Idaho painter. If you haven't subscribed to Steve Ramsey's channel, Woodworking for Mirror Morals, subscribe to his channel also. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. We'll talk to you later.